Some people think that the world's created by God. Others consider such ideas to be remnants of an archaic and superstitious approach to reality. However, whether or not we accept or reject the idea of God as creator, it's worth having a clear idea of what it is we're accepting or rejecting, because while the idea that God made the world sounds straightforward, it's actually a lot more subtle than either believers or non-believers often realize. And if we wish to accept or reject this teaching, we at very least need to know what it is. So what I'd like to do in these videos is to sketch out the traditional Christian teaching on creation. Listen to the profoundly influential opening of John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that has been made. Now, according to John, anything and everything that's not God is created. Reflecting that insight, the classical Christian view taught since the second century is that God created the world out of nothing. It's very hard to think about nothing. When we say that X was made out of Y, we imagine that Y is the material from which X is made. So if I say that Bob made this desk out of wood, the wood is the stuff from which the desk is made. But when I say that God made the world out of nothing, the nothing isn't some kind of weird stuff from which God composed the world. It is nothing at all. Nothing in capital letters, followed by lots of exclamation marks. Absolutely nothing. So the world the creation of the world isn't some act of making that takes place within like it's not like acts of making that take place within the world it is utterly unique and the importance of that will become clearer in later videos but for now just consider for a moment how creation is unlike other acts when we create something we take something some material we change it we move it from one state to another for instance we take some wood we carve it into a statue in creation, God doesn't think of an idea and then get some materials and tools and then craft something. When God creates the world, God changes nothing because there is nothing to change. God creates ex nihilo. So God's like a craftsman in some ways, except that the world's made from nothing and using no tools. So in important ways, God is not like a craftsman at all. Let me make a brief aside to show another way in which creation is unlike our own actions. When we make something we create in time, we think of an idea, and then after that we gather the materials and tools, and then after that we create. God's act of creation is not like that. We can't speak literally about the time before creation. St Augustine says that when God made the cosmos, he didn't just make space, he created time as well. Time begins with creation, and that fits very well with the way physicists now talk about the relation of space and time as essentially related to one another. So we can't think about God literally in time, thinking about whether to make the world and then after that coming to a decision, yes, you know, I think I will do it, and then after that creating the world, because all of that imagines God living out God's life in time. First he does this, then he does this, then he does the other. But time is an aspect of creation. There is no time before creation. Creation isn't an event in time, but is rather that by which events in time come to be. So the idea of creation out of nothing is a lot more striking and weird than when we first contemplate it. And perhaps we can start to understand why Christian theologians were often considered rather odd when they first proposed it. Other ancient people approached the question very differently. Some thought the world was eternal. It's always been here. It simply exists, and that's that. Others thought that while God did shape and forge the world, making it orderly and beautiful, the matter from which it was made is as eternal as God. Thus God made the world from matter, but he didn't create the matter. And the matter imposed certain limits on what was possible for God. God did very well, all things considered, with the material he had to work with, but he was forced to accept compromises, and this for some things does explain the origins of evil, which they saw as linked to weaknesses of the material world. Still others thought that God created the world out of God. That might sound a little bit odd, so imagine it this way. 
Think about the way that your body generates heat simply as a byproduct of you functioning as the kind of being that you are. You don't choose to generate heat, it just happens as a result of you being a human. In a similar way, these thinkers said that God being God necessarily means that the world emanates from God. God couldn't not create the world, it simply radiates out from God as a byproduct of God being God. Early Christian theologians quickly rejected these alternative views and asserted instead that God created the world ex nihilo, out of nothing. Here's how Irenaeus, an important Christian thinker from the second century, put it. The rule of truth which we hold is that there is one God Almighty who made all things by his word and fashioned and formed out of that which has no existence all things that exist. Very similar to something in um, The Shepherd of Hermas. This teaching was so important to Irenaeus that he describes it as part of the rule of truth, which is the name for the core essentials of the faith. Why did it matter so much to the early Christians? First, they wanted to defend a particular view of God, that God is perfect and unlimited, and that meant that they had to reject the idea that the world was just there, because in that case, the world doesn't need God to be what it is which would make it ultimate and eternal alongside God, and that would limit God. Christian acknowledgement of the godness of God also meant that God isn't limited by the material he's working with. Think of a stonemason or a carpenter whose craft is restricted by the stone and the wood they manipulate. God isn't restricted in this way because God creates out of nothing. So Christians quickly rejected the idea that God creates out of pre-existent matter. And it's worth mentioning as an aside that the church thereby rejected the view that evil was rooted in recalcitrant pre-existent matter. The physical world, says the church, is part of God's good creation and is to be celebrated as such, not disparaged. Second, Christians maintain that God's perfection meant that God was complete in God's self. God lacks nothing and so envies nothing and no one. God doesn't need to create the world in order to be God. Creation is dependent upon God, but God is not dependent upon creation and consequently the act of creation was a free choice on God's part rather than a necessary emanation like your body heat. God has chosen to create the world, but God didn't have to choose to create the world. The world exists, obviously, but it could have not existed. And this has important implications because it tells us something about God and something about the world. About God, it says that God is not compelled to create by anything external to God, like some cosmic rule or law or power that he had to follow, because there are no laws or powers beyond God. More than that, God isn't compelled to create by anything within God. In other words, it's not that God needs to make the world in order to meet some inner need or lack because God lacks nothing. God acquires no extra good by creating the world and God is deprived of no good by choosing not to create it. So God's decision to create is a free decision. There is a danger to avoid here. Some Christian theologians have suggested that because God is almighty, God could choose to do absolutely anything, that God's choices are guided by nothing other than pure will. So God could just as well create a cosmos in which all creatures suffer eternal futility and torment as one in which all creatures share in his goodness. I think this is a very unhelpful way of approaching the subject. Most Christian theologians have insisted that God's will is guided by who God is. God is pure goodness, pure love, pure wisdom, pure beauty. What God chooses will always be guided by God's goodness, wisdom, beauty and love. Consequently, there are some things that God would never choose to do because they're not compatible with who God is. So creation isn't some act of unmotivated, arbitrary caprice, but an act of purposive love. And what that means is that while God didn't have to create the world, God's choice to create makes sense given who God is. We might say that it's a choice that's not necessary, but it is fitting. Here's how St. Augustine puts it. God made what was not from any necessity nor for the sake of supplying any lack in himself, but solely from his own goodness. 
That is because it was good. Some people find it disconcerting that God gains nothing by creating the world. But that view that God gains nothing has important implications. What it means is that the act of creation isn't for God's benefit. It's not an act of divine self-interest. It's an act entirely for the good of creation. It is an act of pure goodness and generosity. And consequently, God doesn't create to gain something he lacks, but to share something he has. Creation out of nothing, therefore, tells us something about God and something about the world. About God, it says that God is perfect, complete, unlimited, gracious. About the world, it says that the world is characterized by utter dependency. Everything in the world, and the world as a whole, depends for its existence upon God. Think about yourself and all that your own existence depends upon. Your parents, food, water, air, and a thousand other things. You are a deeply dependent creature. You exist, but you didn't have to. And your existence is dependent on many things outside of yourself. And the same goes for every creature in the cosmos. Indeed, we haven't got any reason to think that the cosmos itself, the sum total of all those dependent creatures, is any less dependent. The cosmos exists, but there's no reason to think that it had to. The cosmos has being, but its being is not something that had to be. Instead, its being is graciously gifted to it by God. The world is characterized by dependence upon the God from whom it receives the gift of being. In the next video, I'll explore a little more about what creation out of nothing says about the difference between God and creation.